بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم اخرجني من ظلمات الوهم واكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراح Lesson 58 in the Farsi original version is about some of the merits or you can say some of the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for believers First, the lesson starts with a reminder about what we studied in the section about knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about Khuda Shinasi, you know, theology. There we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will primarily belongs only to the good. If something bad happens in the world, that is not the primary, you know, will of God. That can be something that happens as a kind of secondary issue. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for us, but Sometimes we may become ill or poor. Poverty or illness are not meant as such. There are other issues that happen, but then a person also becomes ill or a person becomes, you know, poor. What we want to build upon that is that Iman is the main expectation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Iman leads to happiness, to salvation, to good reward. And that is what Allah primarily wants for us. But if someone chooses the path of denial and rejection and fighting against the truth and would end up with, for example, punishment, Although that is also going to happen with the will of God because nothing happens unless Allah has will for it. But that is not the primary will of God. That's secondary. Like for example, you establish a school. What is your aim? You want to train people. You want to graduate them. Okay. But some people who don't study, then you have to dismiss them. So, although... You have decided to dismiss them, but this is not your primary plan. It's not your primary activity in the school. Is it clear? So, because the will of God primarily belongs to good, therefore, in creation and legislation and reward and punishment, always the side of good becomes more important, prevails, the side of good. So this world, in a sense you can say, is not neutral to good and bad. Yeah? Like, like a school. Is a school neutral to learning and not learning? No. No. Is hospital neutral to health and illness? No. Although some people go to school and remain not educated, go to hospital and maybe they don't, you know, be, they, they are not going to be cured. Maybe they die. But this is not the reason for having hospital. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this world with the aim of people developing and become better and better and become closer to God, have eternal happiness in this world <clears throat> and the hereafter. <clears throat> and then the author says that 
had it not been that some people with their own misuse <coughs> of free will, they end up with being you know, punished. If it was not what some people have done with misuse of freedom, we had no punishment in the world. We, we didn't have any hell in this world. No, as we say in Du'ai Kumilan, فَبِالْيَقِينَ أَقْطَعُ I am very certain. لَوْ لَا مَا حَكَمْتَ بِهِ مِنْ تَعْضِيبِ جَاحِدِيكِ وَإِخْلَادِ مُعَانَدِيكِ لَجَعَلْتَ النَّارَ كُلَّهَا بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا Had it not been that you have made this Wow, this decree that those who deny and fight the truth are hostile towards the truth, you would put them in hell permanently. Had it not been because of that, there would be no hell at all, and fire would have become bardan wa salaman, as it became bardan wa salaman for Ibrahim. Wasalaman becomes cool and peaceful. So this is a, a kind of introductory point for lesson 58. So Ayatollah Mespa says when it comes in takwin in creation, good has more impact. You know, if you do something good. This has more impact, more weight than something bad. Sometimes, you know, uh, when we see many bad things happening in the world, you know, sometimes maybe you start losing your hope. But don't lose your hope. Even if you see a hundred bad people, don't lose your hope. Even one good person can overweigh hundred bad people. Some good work that you do, some charity work, some sincere work for the sake of Allah, can outweigh lots of bad w w work or mischief. Because the world is created for you. The world is friendly and actually obedient to you when you want to do something good. Those who do bad things, they are doing something against the nature of this world, against the laws of this world, they are actually moving against the current. If someone wants to do a mischief in masjid, he should feel that he is not welcomed. Yeah, This world is a masjid. If you look at the world, the whole world is a masjid in a sense. It's a place for worshipping Allah, it's a place that Allah has manifested himself in this world. So those who do bad things in this world, they find themselves, they are not part of this world. They are strangers in this world. Okay? Unfortunately, sometimes we put too much, uh, you know, uh, weight on the side of shaitan. As if shaitan is, na'uzu billah, equal to Allah. So we have Allah, and opposite to Allah, we have shaitan. We have army of Allah and army of shaitan. No, it's not like that. Never shaitan can be even compared to Allah and his power cannot be compared to the power of Allah. The mischief of shaitan cannot be compared to the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? It's like, for example, you have a king and you have a thief. A thief cannot do anything against the king. You have just to be careful not to choose the thief over the king okay so be always full of hope and energy and know that the little good that you do it would be multiplied by the divine forces which are there in this world okay the same is true about your studies inshallah if you study you would see how much barakah, inshallah, Allah will put in your study. But there is no barakah in not studying. Okay. When it comes to legislation, also Allah in his legislation made things in the way that 
they can help us in our progress. Allah didn't want to make life difficult for us. Na'udhu Billah. We should not think that Allah wanted to make life miserable for religious people. If you think that those who are not religious, they enjoy their life more, this is misconception. I think those who are religious people actually enjoy their life much more. We enjoy much more. The religion has come to take away unnecessary worries, stress, feeling that you don't belong to anywhere. These are very bad feelings that people who have no faith, they have. Lots of superstitious ideas. Religion is a liberating force. Religion is something that gives you a space to function in the majlis that we had, you know, last week uh, for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I said, if there are rules and regulations in religion, this is not restriction. This is in order to help you to be able to move fast. You know, why we have traffic regulations? Is it because they wanted to restrict us? It's because there is a tyrant, for example, you know, I don't know, system that they say you should, you know, stop when the light is red. No, this is not tyranny. If there was no regulation, then we were not able to move. We were hitting each other or we were stuck in the first crossroad. So traffic and police are there to help us to move as easy as possible, as fast as well, without hitting each other, without putting ourselves or other people into trouble. So this is the way that Allah has legislated so that in our personal life, family life, business life, I don't know, social life, political life, we can move easily without harming ourselves or other people. So in legislation, Allah has made this very Easy. Rasulullah said, Bu'ithtu ala shari'atin samhatin sahlah. My code of law is very lenient and easy. You can practice Islam, I think almost, completely in all over the world. Yeah? You don't need you know, to go to Mecca or Medina or I don't know, a holy place to practice Islam. You can practice Islam almost everywhere. Yes, sometimes people may come and they want to put you into trouble, that's another issue. They, for example, maybe some people say, if you pray, if you fast, we are going to, I don't know, kill you. So this is mischief coming from someone. Otherwise, Allah's expectations are so reasonable and so moderate that if no one you know, is doing mischief, you can do your religion without causing any difficulty for anyone. You can be a good Muslim and causing no problem for any other person and causing no problem for yourself, for your family. So you can practice Islam everywhere because this Sharia is meant to be a Sharia that can be practiced. A daughter, if you have a daughter, for example, I don't know, nine years old, a boy, son, 15 years old, if you have a mother who is 90 years old, okay, they all can practice this religion. A person who lives in London and New York or a person who lives in a village, they can practice this religion. So this is the way that Allah has made the legislation so that it helps people to move towards good. And also when it comes to reward, this is also a very beautiful discussion. When it comes to reward, Allah is very generous with respect to rewarding you for good things. But when it comes to punishment, Allah is very just. Not, you know, He punishes you too much. He doesn't multiply the punishment. Okay? So, as the Quran says, مَنْ جَعَ فَلَا يُجْزَى إِلَّا مِثْلَهَا if someone brings a bad action, commits a sin, he would not be punished except equal to what he has committed. 
One sin, one punishment. Okay? But, man ja'a bil hasana, falahu ashru amthaliha. Please read the, the, I think the last part of the papers on understanding God's mercy in the message of Thaqalain. I have there mentioned different aspects of Allah's generosity in His reward. So one is this, but there are many other issues. So the minimum reward for a good action is 10 times. It's the minimum, not maximum. It can be much more. مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل في كل سنبلة مئة حبة. So if you give one pound of charity, it's like seven years of wheat and it has hundred seed, so it becomes seven hundred. And still he says, Allah multiplies, so it becomes 1400, for example. 2100. Or, you know, there are certain times in the night of Jum'ah, in the night of uh, middle of Sha'ban, reward is many, many times more. In the months of Ramadan, reciting one verse is equal to reciting the entire Quran. Then we go to the night of Qadr. Doing something in the night of Qad is like doing the same thing for 1,000 months. Actually more. Because it's khayrun min alf shah. So Allah is very generous. Because this is a school. Okay? So Allah wants to help people who want to learn. To want to educate themselves. This is a hospital. Allah wants to help those who want to get rid of their illness. You want it? You have a question? His mercy of Allah. Is it just the mercy? Or of course, there is the mercy without denying. But is it also because of our fitra, our our um, tendency towards committing sin? Because no. it's difficult. For, you know, is, is it because you know, like for example, shirk or ush and things like this? Because we cannot be completely sinless in that respect. So Even is it, is it related to this? No. I don't think so. Because I think actually our fitra is and you know tends towards good. You know, it's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us in the way that, you know, for example, imagine if a car is the tires are not balanced, the car goes to the right, for example. So you have to keep, you know, steer carefully. We are not created by Allah in this way. That you know, we are creating the way that we want to go to the misguidance. And then we have to know. Allah has created in the way that we can go straight. But if you are not careful, then you may yourself turn the steer and go to the right or left. Otherwise, Allah has created things in the way that is going straight. But because he wants to help, the, we are not created to go, uh, to go to hell. We are created to go to heaven. Yeah? So all the help, all the facilities are there to help people reach the destination. Or for example, you know, we have this in Hadith that normally, maybe there are exceptions, but normally for bad intention, you are not punished. Okay? For bad intention. For example, you make intention of not doing mubahasa. But then your friend says, you know, let's do mubahasa. Sheikh, you know, gets, you know, upset. So you do mubahasa. Okay, you are not punished for that. But if you have good intention, you say, I want to do mubahasa. So you prepare yourself, then something happens. Your friend doesn't come. You get sawab. Okay, because you had the good intention. Someone says, let's go for salatul jama'ah. So he goes to masjid. Imam has not come. He has the reward. But someone says, let's go na'uzu billah to a sinful gathering. And when he goes there, it's finished. Inshallah, he's not going to be punished. Although there is darkness caused, 
by bad intention, darkness is caused, but Allah is not punishing for something that didn't materialize. So for good intention, there is reward. For bad intention, there is no punishment. So, uh, intention is one side, multiplication of uh, reward. Or, as you may remember, and in that paper I have explained, Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the best of your action and makes it the standard by which he rewards you. For example, in all your acts of prayer, there was one prayer which was very good. Okay? So for some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards all their prayers according to the best prayer that they have performed. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَلَنْ نُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبَةً وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ We would reward them according to the best of what they have been doing. Okay? One ziara, one, I don't know, Salayarahim, one charity was the best. Allah says, I reward you for all the similar acts which were not that good in the same way that I give you reward for the best. So this is generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One also aspect of the generosity of Allah is that he forgives your minor sins if you avoid major sins. The Quran says very clearly, this is Surah Nisa, verse 31. In Tajtanibu, كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهِ نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَنُدْخِلْكُمْ مُدْخَلًا كَرِيمًا If you avoid the major sins that you have been prohibited, we will cover your sins and we will let you enter a very honorable entrance. You will go to heaven. So, if you manage, inshallah, not to do any major sin, your minor sins are forgiven. Is it with Tawbah or without Tawbah? Without. Because with Tawbah, even major sins will be forgiven. Okay? If you avoid major sins, minor sins are forgiven even without Tawbah. Of course, if you insist on minor sin, it becomes major. La sagira ma'al israr. Okay? So if someone says, uh, I, I am very, for example, clever. I don't do major sins, but I keep doing minor sins. No, this becomes major then. Okay? Because insistence on minor makes it major. Okay? But if someone doesn't insist, he's sad that he has committed these things, but he has not done toba, still it would be forgiven. When it comes to major sins, they can be forgiven by toba. Major sins can be forgiven by toba. Even, uh, are you 100% here? 100%? Because I don't want to confuse you. If you're not 100% here, I shouldn't say it. Even the ayah says that sometimes major sins without Tawbah can be forgiven. Which ayah is this? Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Quran, uh, chapter, I don't remember. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ It's not in the book. 
you can add inna allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi allah would not forgive to associate partner to it so shirk you know shirk is the uh, worst major sin okay inna allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi allah would not forgive this but wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalik anything lower than that liman yasha it's not guaranteed but Allah can forgive. Is this with Tawbah or without Tawbah? This is without Tawbah. Because if it is with Tawbah, even Shirk is forgiven. If someone was Mushrik and then he repents. It's forgiven. So, minor sins, if you avoid major sins, will be forgiven. Even there is no Leman Yasha. It's for everyone. Major sins, if you avoid Shirk. Might be forgiven without Tawbah, but certainly with Tawbah. And Shirk with Tawbah. But also there is something, we call it Shafa. Shafa is also a way to be forgiven. Sometimes either you haven't done Tawbah or your Tawbah was not proper. So still some of the sins are there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. is quoted as saying اِدَّخَرْتُ شَفَاعَتِ لَأَهْلِ الْكَبَائِرِ مِنْ أُمَّتِ I have saved, reserved my shafa'ah. Okay? For whom I do shafa'ah? Those who have committed major sins from my ummah. Okay? Because if they have just committed minor sins, they don't need shafa'ah. Yeah? So shafa'ah is for the people who have committed major sins. Also, yes, we have, we have detailed discussion about Shafa. If you have questions about Shafa, please wait. When I finish, if you still remember, then you can ask. <laughs> but inshallah, the, we have two lessons on Shafa. Mm -hmm. And I want to finish tonight uh, all these lessons. So, something also important before we end this lesson is... That also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his rahmah has asked the angels, has guided the angels to ask forgiveness for mu'mineen. Yeah? For example, there are several verses, but one is الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْعَرْشَ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا those angels who carry the arsh and those angels who are around, they glorify Allah and they ask Allah to forgive the believers. رَبَّنَا وَسَعْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ رَحْبَةً وَعِلْمًا فَاخْفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكَ وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ Who has put this in the mind or heart of the angels to ask for forgiveness for mu'mineen? Allah Allah has made angels so nice that they have concern for us. You know, angels don't say, we are not going to hell, we don't bother about human beings. No, they bother about human beings who try to be good. Or we have a istighfar <coughs> of chosen servants of Allah. When they do injustice to themselves, if they come to you, and if they do istighfar, istighfarullah, وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ لَبَجَدُ اللَّهَ تَبْوَابًا رَحِيمًا Or the sons of Ya'qub alayhi salam, they said, Ya Abba تَسْتَغْفَرْ لَنَا They asked their father to do istighfar. No one, other than Allah can forgive. Yeah? We discussed this, I think he, he was here. That no one other than Allah can forgive. But there are people who can ask Allah on your behalf, please forgive this person. Even your parents can ask for forgiveness. And this was, I think, Saturday I discussed this. So, Rasulullah is not forgiving you. 
But Rasulullah is asking Allah to forgive you. Okay? Astaghfarullah means they ask for forgiveness. Wastaghfara lahumur Rasul. Rasulullah on their behalf asks Allah to forgive. So angels, chosen servants of God, even mu'mineen. You know, you pray for each other. Allahumma gfir lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat. Wal muslimin wal muslimat. You, you can ask Allah to forgive each other. In your Salatul Layl, for example, you ask forgiveness for 40 believers, yeah? Even these are important. These are very important. Another thing which is very important, you can do some good action on behalf of someone and he gets the reward. Okay? So you say, for example, I want to do extra mubahisa and the reward is for my father. He gets the reward. Okay? But if you say, I don't do mubahisa and the punishment is for so and so, no, he doesn't get the punishment. Punishment is only on you. Okay? <laughs> so you cannot, you know, put someone else into trouble by doing a mischief or not doing your wajib, but by doing something good, you can transfer something good to that person. Of course, in these cases, normally the main beneficiary is the person who is donating, who is gifting the sawab, yeah? You gain, I think, more than what that person gains. But still he will gain the reward. But Allah says, how nice is this servant of mine that he is concerned about another servant of mine he has done some action, he has paid money, he has done all these things, but he is asking me to give reward to the other person. He's not selfish. Because sometimes even in religion we can become selfish. Yeah? I want all, my, all the rewards for me, not for you. Yeah, we are worried that the reward shouldn't go to other people. So I make sure that in my intention I don't include anyone. Because I have gone to Hajj, I have gone to Ziyara, all the you know, <laughs> troubles. Why I should share other people? Uh, this is selfishness in Ibadah. So Ibadah even can become selfish. But you say, Alhamdulillah, Allah has given me tawfiq of doing this. I include all people, all mu'mineen, living and the dead, in my niyyah. And then you think you are going to lose? You are not going to lose. Allah is going to, inshallah, reward you. Much more, much more. And maybe actually because of them your amal would be accepted. If you're, you include mu'minin in your action, you include Imam Zaman, then inshallah there is a chance that for, because of them your action is accepted, then you get something. But if it was just for you, maybe it was not acceptable. Of course for wajibat, you cannot make the intention of niyabah or sharing, you do it on your own, but still the reward that you get, you get, you can offer. The reward of doing something for yourself. So this is also another aspect of the way this world is helping the people who want to be good, who want to improve. Okay, now we move to Shafa. Lesson 59 is about Shafa'ah, and lesson 60 answers to some questions. I mentioned something about Shafa'ah, then we will have a short break, then inshallah we continue. Okay. People, even those who are not religious, or those who are religious, for example, in their own ordinary life, they are all familiar with this situation that sometimes maybe a person wants to get something from a high personality. For example, he wants to get a help or some, I don't know, money or whatever. Or for example, he is going to be punished. So he's looking for someone who can you know, help him to be forgiven. Okay, so this happens. So, in Arabic, this person that 
you try to please him so that he can intercede for you is called Shafi'ah. Shafi'ah. And Shafi'ah comes from Shafar, means two. You know, because this person comes with you, is called Shafi. Or you can say, because your action by itself was not good and his Shafa is added to your action, so it is called Shafa. Means it's added. It becomes a kind of pair. Okay? It becomes a pair. Shafa'a. Like, Washafa'a wal Watr. Shafa'a. Okay. According to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the position of Maqam al Mahmud to the Prophet. You know, you know the ayah in Surah Isra. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَحَجَّتْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكْ عَثَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا Part of the night, do tahajjud. So that your Lord may raise you to the praised position. How did Rasulullah reach praised position? By doing wajibat? No, wajibat was not enough. By doing salatul layl. And Salatul Layl for Rasulullah was wajib. Yeah, for us is mustahab, but for him was wajib. So, according to Rivayat, this Maqam Mahmud is Shafa'ah. Rasulullah is able to do Shafa'ah in a very, you know, broad way. Or in Surah Zuha, verse 5. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Your Lord is soon going to give you, doesn't say what, is going to give you so much that you would be happy. According to in, in Rewayat, this is again Shafa'ah. Because Rasulullah would not be happy unless he helps the believers who have problems. When there are believers who have committed some sins, not by being a stubborn and insistent and committing sin. Believers who wanted to be good, yeah, but they have some shortcomings, some problems. So Rasulullah, by doing shafa'ah and then seeing that those people are forgiven, he would be happy. So, Shafa'a is a Quranic principle and is mentioned in many verses of the Quran and Hadith. But in the Quran, we also have false Shafa'a, rejected Shafa'a. And some people who don't know the real interpretation of these verses, they think the Quran denies Shafa'a altogether. But no, we have false shafa'ah and we have genuine and right shafa'ah, proper shafa'ah. For example, some pagans who were idol worshippers, you know, especially in Mecca, the type of polytheism which was there was they believed in one God as creator, but they believed in different gods as their shofa'a, you know, they said, na'buduhum illa ila zulfa. We only worship them so that they take us closer to God. Or for example, they used to say, Ha'ula'i shofa'a'una indallah. These are our intercessors. They do shafa'a for us. So they thought this idol, this statue that they worship, can do shafa'a for them. Okay? The Quran says, on the day of judgment, no one can do shafa'a for such people. No one can be guardian for such people. 
ليس لها من دون الله ولي ولا شفيع they don't have any guardian other than Allah to help them they don't have any shafi to help them okay some people think that these verses reject even the shafa of rasulullah the shafa of the prophets no this is false shafa that pagans were thinking that there are idols there are gods that independent from god they can do shafa so allah has delegated tafith means allah has delegated the authority to them and then he has nothing to do with it you don't need to worry about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore just please these idols by offering something you know some sacrifice to these idols they thought that then they can get what they want okay but shafa in the proper way is a quranic principle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Baqarah in Ayatul Kursi, you know, verse 255. Man who is the one who can do shafa'ah except with Allah's permission? So it means that bi'ithnillah you can do shafa'ah. Okay? Bi'ithnillah. It's like, you know, miracles. Miracles are done through the Prophet. On the hand of the Prophet, but it is bi'ithnillah. The power comes from Allah. It's not the Prophet doing this independent from God. The concept of, you know, again, tawassul is the same, you know. It's not independent. It's bi'ithnillah. So, Quran says, Man dalladhi yashfa indahu illa bi'ithni. Or Sunnah Yunus, verse 3. Ma min shafi'in illa min ba'd idhni. There is no intercessor except after Allah's permission. If Allah permits, they do shafa. Or in Surah Taha, يَوْمَ إِذْنَ لَا تَنْفَعُ الشَّفَاعَةِ إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانِ وَرَضِيَ لَهُ قَوْلَ On that day, shafa is not helping except those that Allah has permitted and is pleased with their word. This is Surah Taha. 109. Pardon? 109. 109, yes. So, if you look at these verses, I have written many verses here, and they are also in the book. You see that Quran very clearly says that there is Shafa'ah, but those who do Shafa'ah and those who receive Shafa'ah have certain conditions so mushrikeen should not expect receiving shafa'a idols should not be thought that they can do shafa'a so idols are not to do shafa'a and mushrikeen are not to receive shafa'a okay but prophets they can do shafa'a and mu'mineen can receive shafa'a and then all of them are mentioned in the quran and in the book for example وَلَا يَشْفَعُونَ إِلَّا لِمَنِ ارْتَضَى Surah Anbiya, Prophets, verse 28. They don't do shafa except for those that Allah is pleased with them. So, question. What does it mean Allah is pleased with them? They have no sins? If they have no sins, why they need shafa? No, it means that Allah is pleased with their faith, with their iman. Yeah? Like, you know, we say, رَضِيْتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ So they are mu'min, but they have problems. Okay? It's not that they are rejecting the faith altogether. Or for example, وَكَمْ مِنْ مَلَكٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ لَا تُغْنِي شَفَاعَتُهُمْ شَيْئًا إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدْ أَنْ يَعْضَنَ اللَّهِ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَرْضَى This is Surah Najm, verse 20. Six, and also those who do shafa'ah. Please look at this verse uh, carefully, or listen to this verse carefully. Surah Zukhruf, verse eighty-six. There is a point here. This ayah. وَلَا يَمْلِكُ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِهِ الشَّفَاعَةِ Those that they call means they worship. They call other than God. They don't have shafa'ah. 
illa means this is estesna'i munqate you know means leave those idols man shahida bil haqq wa hum ya'lamun those who bear witness to what people have done truthfully and they know who are these people these are the witnesses that we talked about them in the discussion about imama you remember we said for every generation of people there is a witness that bears witness about their faith about their actions yeah lananza'anna min kulli ummatin shahida wa ja'na bika ala haula'i shahida you remember we said rasulullah was shaheed but also after rasulullah was must be someone yatluhu shahidun min or qul kafa billahi shahidan bayni wa baynakum wa man indahu ilmu alkitab and we brought the ayah about jesus alayhi salam that he says kuntu shahidan alayhim ma dumtu fihim he said shaheed has to live with people you remember all these things so the people who do shafa are the people that shahida bil haqq wa hum ya'lamun they have knowledge they know what people have done what faith or you know other conditions of heart they had action everything and they can be a witness so in the first place these are the hujjahs of allah ma'sumin who can do shafa but then under ma'sumin pious mu'minin can also do shafa and then there are also other people can do shafa for example your teacher your alim that you have learned from him anyone that you have learned from him something and you have acted upon it he can do shafa yeah or maybe your parents do shafa for you maybe your children do shafa for you a muazzin who calls for prayer and people listen to his adhan and because of that they go to masjid and say prayer according to something he can do shafa for them okay so people that you have benefited from them in dunya in akhirah allah gives them some also right to help you even there so it's like manifestation a kind of manifestation of what they have done in dunya and in akhirah also is there okay mushrikan means polytheists pagans idol worshippers they don't qualify for receiving intercession those who deny the hereafter mas salaka kum fi saqar ya they say kunna uh kunna nukadhu yawm ad-din lam nakum min al-musallin lam nakun nut'mu al-miskin kunna nakhudhu ma'a al-kha'idin then allah says ma tanfa'uhum shafa'atu ash-shafi'in so those who deny hereafter those who maybe don't do charity those who look, don't look after the orphans you know so there is a kind of evil nature sometimes then you don't qualify for shafa also those who deny shafa maybe even these people who deny shafa like the people who deny istighfar of and so they would not benefit from it those who deny shafa also may not benefit from shafa but uh, something very important and shall we uh, mention this again is that no one should rely on shafa and then become careless na'uzubillah says alhamdulillah we have rasulullah and he would do shafa for me no shafa is for the things which has have gone out of your control you did your best yeah sometimes i use this example there is a student a talaba who attends class regularly takes notes does what mubahasa okay prepares for exam but he doesn't remember on the day of exam the answer to some questions okay here the teacher may help him for example by not being very harsh in marking for example okay but a person who didn't study he didn't do mubahasa 
Then he says, teacher, please do shafa for us. Why I should do shafa for you? How many times I told you to do mubahasa? <laughs> so, so no one should rely on shafa and then become careless, na'uzu billah. Shafa is for nice people who so much blame themselves for doing something bad. They feel guilt, you know. Then Shafa comes and helps them. Not uh, terrible people that they don't bother about committing sins and they say, you know, Shafa is going to sort, sort out everything. This is not the case. And there is a danger that actually if people keep committing sins, may even lose their Iman. So, and they don't have, you know, even Iman to receive Shafa'ah. So, makana aqibata alladheena asa'u su'ah and kathabu ba'ayatillah wa kanu biha yastahzoon. Some people that kept doing bad things, their end was to deny the signs of God, the communications of God, and do mockery of them. This is what Lady Zainab said to Yazid, that implied by committing sins, you have lost your iman altogether. <coughs> of course, if this is, if we suppose he had iman, so for the sake of argument, <laughs> we say if you had iman, then by all this mischief you have lost it, and this is why he was, you know, saying la ibat hashimu bil mulk. Okay. We will have a little break, short break, and inshallah after that we continue with lesson 60, which is about some questions and maybe objections about Shafa'ah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. <laughs>